Hey everybody, what is going on? I hope you all are having a good day. My name is Galaxy and welcome to this video. Now guys, I'm not going to waste too much time uh, doing intros and stuff, so let's just jump right in. You guys know what's going on. We're doing a build for Flak today, my personal build. Uh, I do hope you guys uh, enjoy this and stuff, so let's jump right into the weapons. Now, straight off the bat, probably like in the top like two or three most vital things for the entire build, you're going to want this weapon, the Lucian's Call. Mine's skinned up right now, but you're going to want the Lucian's Call. If you see over there on the left, you can check out its stats and stuff, but at the very bottom, it says critical hits, return two bullets to your magazine, and ricochet two bullets to the nearest enemy, which is going to make this gun, like, so valuable in combat. This gun is going to have so much, like, actual damaging presence. It's unbelievable. Next up, we're going to have the uh, partner to the Lucian's Call, which is the Rowan's Call, which I've seen a little, a couple other people do uh, similar builds to this, but they never mention the Rowan's Call, and the Rowan's Call is a Jacob's Assault Rifle that, uh, again, you can check out the stats, but if you look at the bottom, it has the exact same, uh, like, side effect. The critical hits return two bullets to your magazine and ricochet two bullets to the nearest enemy, which, again, is just going to make this gun uh, insane whenever it comes to actual damage output, especially against uh, things in, like, Proving Grounds, like groups of enemies with shields or even like uh, bosses with shields because you can pretty much just indefinitely shoot this weapon next up this third slot right here i have the companion this is going to be the slot where you can like change out whatever you want the one that like the one that doesn't exactly matter too much you can switch this out for pretty much whatever you feel like whatever you have a, a, a preference of obviously that is the case with all of these guns if you feel one is better than the other feel free to swap them out i'm just giving like an overall general guide to what i've been doing and it's been working out for me pretty well i'm using the companion but uh, uh next up another pretty essential part you're gonna need a bang stick now try to get a times you know however much you can bang stick i'm sure there's better ones out there than this one this is just the one i happen to have at the moment which Still, even though I'm aware that it's not the best one that I could get, it is still, like, better than all of the legendaries and everything that I have. You, you see all the stuff over here on the right side. Over all of these, I'm using the bang stick. And there's very good reason for that. I'm sure you guys know uh, what's up with the uh, critical skills for Flak. It makes these absolutely incredible. These can tear through vault monsters faster than anything else in the game. So make sure you get a bang stick. Next up, my shield. Uh, I don't think the shield is the most important part of the build. It's probably one of the bottom ones. But I really love the uh, stopgap. Uh, it's one of the shields that on breaking you become immune to any damage for five seconds Which I just really like and think is super good and also the capacity and recharge delay and recharge rate of this is just Overall good like those are very good stats and it has a good effect and it has negative 25 percent recharge delay So that 4.3 seconds is actually more like 3.27 seconds and it's a booster shield which uh, unlike Borderlands 2 I believe are pretty good in Borderlands 3 So if you have a stopgap and you're not knowing what shield to use use a stopgap Next up, very important, make sure you get a hex grenade. I do not care what kind of uh, element it is, your hex grenade, just get one. I don't even need, I don't even know if I need to explain why, you guys probably already know of it, and uh, you know exactly why you need one, so there's that. For the class mod, I'm using a purple that gives plus two to leave no trace, plus one to fast and the furious, and plus two to ambush predator. And uh, also, another huge thing that I, I like about this class mod, the reason I'm using it over a plus 3 to leave no trace class mod, is it gives a plus 50% Torg weapon accuracy, which is super good for, you know, I was talking about how great the bang stick was, that's a Torg. So that really helps a lot with the hip fires and all of that junk. If at all possible, get a plus 3 class mod with leave no trace. Honestly, the other two are almost irrelevant, just as much leave no trace as you possibly can get is the class mod you're going to want to have like for the ideal build of this next up my relic is an elemental damage booster it's not even max level it's just level 31 i still find it more helpful and like additive to the build than any of the other like level 50 legendary relics i've gotten and it gives a elemental damage boost of 135 percent which is freaking amazing and the slam triggers a shield that reduces incoming damage by 57% in the last 5 seconds. I hardly ever use slam. That is a good effect to, like, give myself a little, uh, temporary, you know, boost. Because I'm, I'm gonna be honest, we're not, like, built crazy into the health tree. Like, we're, we have it, some of it, but, you know, it's not as good as it potentially could be. So, I mean, a shield that gives you almost 60% damage resistance is pretty good. Plus, you get 6% radiation damage, which isn't too important for this build, but the 13% cryo efficiency is super good because our Rowan's Call is cryo, and I believe they come out like that all the time. I I, I think they're exclusively 
cryo? Maybe I shouldn't say that because I'm not sure. All the versions I've seen though have been cryo. And he had 16% weapon accuracy overall, which is another just super overall helpful buff. So that was going to be it for the gear. Next up, we're going to be jumping into the skill tree and we're going to start over here in the uh, orange spider ant skill tree because that is where the vast majority of your skills are going to be going. Now, first off, immediately throw three points into leave no trace. So when Flux goes to critical hit, there is a chance for one ammo to be added to the magazine. That is what makes this build kind of run, essentially. You get unlimited shots, especially when combined with the Rowan's Call or the Lucian's Call. You never run out of ammo. You literally do not. Whenever Flax kills an enemy, they gain a stack of Interplanetary Stalker. For each stack, uh, they gain a bonus to all damage dealt. Now, so as you can see, you gain 8% damage bonus per stack, and then depending on the type of enemy that you kill, you gain another bonus relative to that uh, enemy's typing. Next up, we have head count. Whenever Flax scores a critical hit, which you will be doing all of the time, there is a chance that their action skill cooldown is reduced, which is pretty important because we're going to be going in and out of fadeaway constantly with the help of this skill. I think the normal cooldown of fadeaway is usually 45 seconds, but with this, we can be inside of fadeaway more than we're not inside of fadeaway. It's actually incredible, and then the whole time we're in fadeaway, we'll be shooting uh, unlimited critical hits for the duration of that. And I'm going to explain how we do that in the Stalker skill tree more in just a second. Okay, so Two Fang is returning from Borderlands 2, so you guys probably know what this does. And it just gives you a 25% chance to fire an extra projectile per shot, which again is super helpful when trying to score critical hits and get ammo refunded to you. The more bullets you shoot, the better chance you have of getting ammo back. Therefore, Two Fang. Next up is Big Game, where Flax Hunter skills become much more effective and have a longer duration. So we have 100% extra Hunter skill duration and 30% extra Hunter skill effects, which is just good overall. Next up, we have the most dangerous game, which is a kill skill. Whenever Flax kills a badass or stronger enemy, they gain increased critical hit damage, gun damage, and handling for a long time. Additionally, they receive a cash reward from the Intergalactic Bureau of Bounty Hunting. Now, the cash reward isn't exactly where we're taking this. I mean obviously but if you see down there the duration of this is 120 seconds so for 120 seconds after killing a badass or stronger enemy we are getting 25 percent extra gun damage 10 percent critical hit damage 33 percent handling for two full minutes if you guys have ever run anything like a proving ground you know that you definitely fight a badass more than every two minutes so you are constantly with this skill at a plus 25 percent damage plus 10% critical hit damage, and plus 33% handling the entire time. It's super good and helpful whenever doing uh, runs. If you're just fighting a singular boss, like doing resets, uh, unless there's a badass enemy around, it's not really going to affect you. But during all other regular gameplay, the skill is going to come in really handy and give you a lot of extra damage. The next skill is pretty simple. It just increases critical hit damage, and enemies are less likely to attack you. So that just decreases your aggro a little bit and gives you extra 15% crit damage on your critical hits. Next, we're going to be maxing out a skill that just gives us another 15% gun damage and another 25% action skill damage, which is going to compound with the critical hits we are getting from our fadeaway that we were constantly going to be in. So I just shouldn't have to explain where we're taking that. And then uh, flat games, a chance to score a critical hit with weapons against any part of enemies. So you have a one in five chance of no matter what you shoot, it being a critical hit. And then on top of that, there's another 60% chance that that is going to refund you ammo. And then on top of that, there's another 25% chance that that shot is also going to shoot two bullets, which both have a 60% chance of returning you ammo. And it's just incredible. All these skills compound together. So make sure to get the bottom part of this tree. Next up, we're going to be switching over to green to move it along. I went ahead and just maxed out self-repairing system, which gives Flax maximum health and increase, and you constantly regenerate health, which health regeneration is always good. It's something I feel like every character should have at least a little bit of, and you get plus 30% max health, which is honestly quite a bit for a skill at the very top of a tree. So uh, I would go ahead and take that. I'm not taking the attack commands. We hardly ever use attack commands. So not saying that this hunter skill is bad or anything. I just think that the health regeneration and the max health is a little better. Next up, max out both of these next skills. All my BFFs, which ally share a portion of Flax total health regeneration, Flax Pet shares twice the amount of health regeneration. So allies share 50% of Flax health, which is just pretty good. It uh, helps with team fights, which I do pretty often, especially like I match make with Breeding Grounds and play with my friends. So this is really helpful for just keeping us all alive. Uh, next up is Overclocked. Flak gains increased fire rate. Flak gains even more fire rate after reloading. So you get just 10% fire rate after reloading and then just plus 10% fire rate overall. So after reloading, you're at 20% fire rate just from the five points in the skill, which is essentially just 20% more damage. 
obviously for one point we're going to be taking the ability that lets our pets heal us i know that saved me in a lot of situations the next skill turn tail and run i think is just pretty cool while moving flak constantly regenerates health and gains damage reduction uh while still flak gains gun damage and fire rate which is super awesome so if you're moving you regen health and gain damage reduction and if you're holding still you get fire rate and gun damage which is just both those things are pretty good you're always doing one of them at a certain time so that skill is always active so i definitely take it while above half health Flax gun damage and movement speed are increased. Gun damage by 33%, absolutely amazing, and movement speed by 13.3%. Uh, you get pretty used to the movement speed, so I'm not sure exactly what it feels like on and off because I've had it for so long, but the gun damage, 33% on on top of everything we've done, yeah, we're taking we're, we're taking 33% gun damage. And then with all those points, you will unlock the next skill, but uh, we're not gonna be using that. We needed to make it down the tree this far to be able to use this ability, which successive hits on the same target increase flax critical hit damage per hit. Uh, unblinking eye resets every three hits. So this incredibly is good with compounding damage on single targets, especially like bosses, if you're loading them up with the torque shotgun stickies. Uh, this is just gonna like, Oh man, this is just great. You just gotta have this. this is super good. And then I didn't mention the other one we're taking, which fadeaway no longer ends after flak attacks, which normally fadeaway would end after you shoot three bullets, which are all guaranteed critical hits. This makes it to where the duration is now eight seconds and the critical hit damage is halved, but you can shoot a lot, like a lot more than just three shots in the eight seconds that you normally would get, making this skill like this like multiplies fadeaway by like times five in terms of just sheer usefulness and effectiveness. So make sure you get this skill and this skill. Very important to couple those that fade away. Now that I've talked about all the skills, I am going to go ahead and uh, I'll just run down to approving grounds. I'm on I'm on Mayhem 3. All right, let's see what our modifiers are on here. 50% less from incendiary, enemies against 20% fire rate, enemy explosions have a greater increased effect, and enemies have a 30% chance to reflect projectiles back. Okay, so we're on sticky mode. Let's jump off. Some guys will appear immediately right here. Oh, a little bit of lag. Alright, and then let's reload, see how many of them we actually get. Okay, yeah, with literally two bullets in the clip, we had a net loss of two bullets there. I just killed all three of those dudes. Let me try out uh, the Rowan, or sorry, the Lucian's call for you dudes. And if that dude was actually near anybody, like here, this guy probably is. The bullets actually get reflected at another uh, enemy as well. So you're getting pretty much double damage if there's... See, like that guy, he's already at, uh, like, no health. That's because he took all the reflected bullets from this guy. So you could essentially shoot two people, like, just max damage at once with this gun. It's absolutely incredible. And then these dudes coming should have some shield on. So let me try out the Rowan's call for you guys to show you how it is. See, look at their shields. All of their shields are gone. Everyone's shield. This is a badass commando. Just eating shit. And we're still at a max... Uh, we're 20 bullets out of 24 bullets. I killed three enemies, one of which was a badass, for a net loss of four ammo on Mayhem 3. Okay, let's try out the companion. Companion has a super high ammo capacity and does really good critical damage as well. Let me see if I can find this one. Okay, let's see how it works in Fadeaway. Oh my god. All right, we're already through the first area, and we have spent two minutes. Okay, let's try this shotgun out on some heavies. Oh, see, the thing, only bad thing about the bang stick is that if you miss one shot, then it usually does, uh, usually does have to reload because it's only got a two ammo capacity, and it shoots two ammo at once. Oh, this dude's dead. You saw what I just did to that other guy? You really want some of this? Oh my gosh, I hate Nogs, dude. Nogs are so OP. Let's see what I can get on this one. Let's see if we can just kill him. Okay, well, he died pretty fast. I'm not gonna lie, those are usually alive for longer. I'm being real with you. So yeah, I think that's uh, some pretty solid evidence that this build and everything about it is just 
honestly probably way too overpowered i wouldn't even be surprised if flak and all of this stuff got nerfed later on this just works so well I do have some footage of bosses as well, if you guys are wondering how this works out on bosses on Mayhem 3. So I'll put that footage up now, and while that's rolling, I do want to say thank you guys for watching through this video. I know it might have been a longer one, but I, I do really hope you enjoyed the build. I, I've been using it, and it just honestly works, I, again, way too well, even. With that being said, leave a like on it if you uh, did enjoy it. I might put a character download. Actually, you know what? I'm totally going to. I'm going to put a character download for it in the, the description so if you do want to try it out yourself before you use it feel free to download the character and just uh give it a whirl for a little bit down in the description uh make sure to subscribe for more stuff in the future because i uh i'm currently leveling up my zane and i want to do a zane build and then as more stuff for the game comes out or as i find more stuff i'll probably do multiple builds for flak i kind of want to try to make use of his blue skill tree so if you uh if you do want to see more videos make sure to go ahead and subscribe and i will talk to you guys in the next one